Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is the dyno difference between 110 race fuel and E85. Now I know you're thinking, well, didn't you already do a test like that? I've done actually two. This would be the third time I've done it. The first engine that was tried on, and I made a video on this, you can go back and watch it. If I can find it, I'll put it the link in the description. I had a 355 small block Chevy, it revved to 7,500 RPM. On gas, it made 580, and I tested it then on E85, and then also on methanol. Methanol got it to break over 600, and you can see the differences, torque being the biggest one. Uh, the next time I tried it was on the 406 Dino Mule. We had tried E85 on, as well on that, and that's in a previous video, which I don't even know if I'll, I'm not gonna put a link for that one. That one isn't as good, I don't think. But when I was doing that, one of the major complaints that both, or most people said in the comments, because yes, I do read them, was, hey, both of those are kind of lower compression. Because the 355 was 11.9 compression ratio, and the small block Chevy was, uh, the 406 was like 11.3. So they said, you're gonna get more advantage from the E85 fuel when you do it with a higher compression motor. And that is today's. So if you've been following along with the LS Dino Mule, you'll know that I put these uh, Promax small bore LS3 heads on. And because their chambers are so small, it brought the compression ratio up to 13 to one. So I figured this would be a great chance to retest the idea of the 110 octane race fuel versus E85. So that's what happened here. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm about to bust a myth that people keep spreading about E85 in this video. So just to give you a rundown of the engine, because people ask, this is a full 408, not 4.8 liter, it's 408 cubic inch LS engine. And it's 430 bore, four inch stroke. Obviously the Promax small bore heads. It has a hydraulic roller camshaft from Texas Speed, it's their stage two. And up top, at this time it had a Super Victor metal manifold and it had, both of the carburetors by the way were the same size. When it was gas with 1000 CFM, at least what's what Demon rates it, and when it was on E85, it was Da Vinci, uh, 1000 CFM carburetor as well, both 4150 style. So um, that pretty much gives a rundown of the engine. Let me show you the results, because I think you're gonna like that. So here's the results with gas, and I'm going to tell you, ignore this air fuel ratio. This is calculated. This is not from an O2 sensor. One of the two meters is off. In other words, what it's doing is it's taking the air hat and the fuel meter, and then it calculates what um, the air fuel ratio should be. It's not right. Because when we're watching the actual O2 sensor, it's dead nuts on. So ignore this in the other page too. Anyway, it makes good power. As you can tell, 682 horsepower, pretty good at 6,600 RPM. And then it made... 584 foot-pounds of torque. Really great. So that's it on gas. Um, now for E85, when we look at that, you, by the way, guess if you think how much power is going to gain. Oh, it gains this much. It went to 684. Remember, it was 682 before, and it is at 6,700 RPM. Now the torque did jump up 590, and that's at 5,300. Again, ignore that. So... You're like, well, that's, that's only two horsepower difference. It doesn't look like as much at all. The overlay is a better picture. Let me show you that, because this will give you the better picture. Ta-da! Now, the black line's gas, red line's E85. As you can tell, peaks, which are right here, E85 is just barely above the gas. That's why if you only looked at peaks, you would ignore all the rest. Because if you look at the 85, down the lower, I mean, that's more than 10 foot-pounds of torque, more than 10 foot-pounds there. It's only at the very top when we start turning some RPMs that they're getting closer to the same. So as far as E85 gain, horsepower-wise, not so much uh, at the peak. But below that, it's better. 
If you were to take the car to the track, even though you only gained two horsepower, the car is going to go faster on E85. And by the way, I should point this out. This is not pumpy E85. This is race E85, which means it's pure. It's not, it's not fake. It's 100% E85, not pump. Could be E70, could be E60. This is race E85. So looking at all that um, gives you some ideas. Not a whole lot of gain there um, at the peak. But now let me bust your myths. Now, after looking at all that, several of you are probably already commenting something that I'm about to address right here. What you saw on both those dyno charts were with me tuning it to the best it could be. So on gas, I had played with timing to get it the best it was, which was a little bit odd here, but it's 29 degrees all the way until 6,200 RPM, I jumped it at 30. That seemed to make the most power, it just did. Um, I had tried to flat one because that's usually what we do to compare stuff. So like when I'm comparing different cylinder heads, I'll keep it at whatever 29 degrees the whole way. But on the, usually on the last pull with the new set of cylinder heads, I will see if I could change timing or something to get it to come out more. Typically it only gains a few. So I did that on the gas and that's what I just showed you. That's the best for the gas. On E85, I did the same. So initially I left the timing curve exactly the same and we made some pulls. And when I first did it, which this isn't the first pull, that's the best pull. When I first did it, the torque or the horsepower was identical, 682. It made the same as gas. The torque itself, the rest, it was within five foot pounds of torque. So it felt like kind of a bust because it really wasn't that much of a difference. So looked at the jetting and, and usually, and this is a me because of a methanol thing. Usually if you have a methanol carburetor, here's a little trick for you. You can richen it up and you might lose two horsepower, but you'll gain like 15 foot pounds of torque. Do you have to change oil more often? Probably, but it does gain more torque. So I was like, maybe if I just change the jetting on the um, E85 carburetor and jet it up, um, I can get the torque number to come up. And that's what it did. So I added like four jet sizes. And what happened is it did bring up the torque, peak horsepower stayed about the same. So in a, in a way it was a win. This is one of those things where you can't always look at the O2 sensor and say, that's what it wants. It's what you think it wants, it's not what the engine wants. Because it, it was saying before, even when we started, you're perfect, don't change anything. And then I was like, mm, let's see what happens. And then at that point, it's made more torque and slightly more horsepower. So O2 sensor is helpful, but don't take it as gospel either. Anyway, one of the complaints from the, all the times I've done E85 is like, you did it wrong, you didn't adjust timing, you should have adjusted more timing because E85 needs more timing. And I understand where you're coming from that because you're like, well, it's more fuel, it takes longer to burn, so you should have to add more timing to it to give it more time to burn all that extra fuel. That's the theory, that's not practice. So just to kind of try that, because I've never seen that work. And I'm not saying it can't, so don't take my word as gospel. I test a lot, but it's not 100%. I've never seen it work, but to try it, I added timing. And guess what happened? And this is busting the myth. It lost power everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And it was only one degree. So after doing that, I thought, hmm, let's do the opposite. So this time what I did was I took a degree out guess what? It gained. So I know the internet would love you to believe that if you run E85, you should run more timing. It does not work that way. Sometimes it might, but in this particular case, that best chart you saw there was actually after taking out two degrees of timing, not adding, removing. So adding more jet, removing two, uh, uh, two degrees of timing, boom opposite of what people on the internet have commented so many times in my last video. So what I'm trying to say is try it. It may not work for every situation, but um, don't think you just automatically should be adding time because that's false. I can clearly testify to that now. The chart you saw was two degrees less timing and more jetting than what was perfect by what the internet would say. Now, then I need to back, make sure I understand this. Don't take this as the absolute thing to do. You need to test it yourself because it may be different with different combinations. After all, this chamber is pretty small. 
So it's a pretty tight chamber, really tight chamber. That might have to do something with the reason why it didn't want the timing. Um, could be a whole number of things, the phases of the moon or whatever, but don't take it that way. Next thing, because I know this is gonna happen too, this is only NA. So if you look at it from this standpoint, you're like, well, I don't know if I really should even switch to it. It's going to make you go faster, and especially if you're running 13 to one, it's way cheaper than race fuel, way cheaper. Even a Drumma E85 race E85 is still cheaper than the Drumma uh, 110. I'm not even talking about pump E85, it's cheaper. This is also NA. Do not confuse this with Power Adder because 100% you should run E85 if you're, if you're doing gas, or at least switch to E85 if you're doing a Power Adder. That's a gains way, way, way more. The prime example of the S10. I did not dyno, chassis dyno with a race gas, but putting the E85 on, I could tell you in every, every sense of the way, it's better. So on a Power Adder deal, E85, 100%, no doubt, you should do that. On an NA deal, if you can't get it, you're not that far off of power as the 110. You are on torque, but not power. So, something to think about. I hope you guys got something out of the video. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not know everything. That's what that means when I say I'm no Superman. I do not forecast iron heads. You guys, take care.